We've had all the press conferences today. Tell us how things are going. Having a good time? Yes. Following the American tradition, Brian Nester, did you propose a treaty on asset rate, yeah. President? Well, I agree with the president. We had all the press conferences we're going to have today. We had a very good meeting.
Maître Michel Bonin et Maître Marianne Deville. Mr. and Mrs. Galen Weston. The Honorable Alan Wallace. Mr. Michael Hornstein and Mrs. Hornstein. Thomas Dequino. The Honorable Larry Grossman and Mrs. Grossman. Monsieur et Madame Paul Tellier. Mr. and Mrs. Jacob Brower. The Honorable Frank C. Carlucci. Dr. J. Alfred Doucette and Dr. Alina Doucette. Mr. Fred Paul. The Honorable William Bodie. Mr. and Mrs. James H. Taylor. The Honorable Charles E. Redmond. Dr. Tyrus Cobb. Mr. and Mrs. Dwight N. Mason. Mr. Marlon Fitzwater. Mr. Peter Murphy. Mr. and Mrs. Frederick S. Eaton. Mr. J. Trevor Eaton and Mrs. Eaton. Mr. and Mrs. Peter Truman. The Honorable Michael H. Wilson and Mrs. Wilson. Mr. and Mrs. Peter B. M. Eby. 
Mr. Arden Haynes. Mr. and Mrs. Appel. Monsieur and Madame Ronald Corré. Mr. Brian Orser. Captain Eric Hardy and Mrs. Hardy. Major General Gordon Cornell, United States Air Force. Dr. Dimitri Pivnicki and Mrs. Pivnicki. Thank Mr. and Mrs. George William Barry. Monsieur et Madame Theodore Arcan. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Stephen B. Roman. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. George Eaton. Statistics may verify the closeness and the interdependence of our two countries. Such evidence does little to illustrate the genuine kinship that we enjoy at a very human and personal level. It has often been noted that Canada and the United States enjoy the closest and most mutually beneficial relationship of any two nations on this earth. We frequently cite our trade statistics and other objective indicators as proof of this. But we know in our hearts that the depth and strength of the relationship lies in these things that defy empirical data. Our friendship is grounded in a history that in the past and has stood the rigorous test of time. We were not far into the 20th century 
before the exigencies of war drew Canadian and American forces together in defense of democratic freedom. While we are good neighbors, there do nonetheless remain important differences between us. And to ignore the state of monarchy, which has evolved to nationhood. While America has chosen to forge a society that causes the many into one cultural entity, Canada has embraced bilingualism and multiculturalism as a more appropriate expression of our reality. Your country is a superpower, a leader with enormous global began in saying how pleased we are to greet you both. May I ask everyone present to rise and raise their glasses to the very good health of the President of the United States of America, Mr. sense of great adventure, of opening a new land, of beginning anew, and for the good of us all. Your Excellency, as pioneers of this great continent, the citizens of our two countries have shared and continue to share a faith and progress, a belief in cooperation and hard work, and a vision of a future free of war and want. Ours are optimistic people, ingrained with the confidence that no problem is insoluble. Together we face the ultimate challenge to peace and freedom during the two great world conflicts of this century. Today, in NATO and in NORAD, and in our consultation of the Economic Summit, the G7, the United Nations, and a host of other cooperative endeavors, we continue to stand together for freedom and democracy and for the economic advancement of mankind. Just as the frontier once stretched before the trappers and frontiersmen who surveyed and opened the North American continent, today we face challenges that require courage, commitment, good sense, and impact. As we hurtle toward the 21st century, we're confident that the future is on the side of the free, and that with God's grace, the greatest days of Canada and the United States are still ahead. Economic challenges are, of course, always present. Prosperity, economic advancement, improving a lot of large numbers of people is no easy task. Critical choices will determine if our children and grandchildren are to live well and possess the same opportunity we've enjoyed. It comes down to this. How can Canada and the United States, mature industrial powers, best meet the competition and remain the business, commercial, and industrial leaders of the 21st century. Mr. Prime Minister, it is your proposal that we cooperate, that we combine and draw upon the collective energy of two economies with bold and far-sighted. It has opened an historic <coughs> prospect. 
Setting the goals, however, is easier than achieving them. Our intense negotiations to bring a comprehensive free trade agreement into Rib B certainly suggests this. There is still much hard bargaining ahead. Yet let us not lose sight of the grandeur of what we seek. We remain hopeful that we can conclude an agreement this year. And if we do, it will be an agreement that will promote the economic prosperity of both countries, fair, equitable, and mutually beneficial. This trade agreement will send a number of messages. First and foremost, it is a resounding no to those who would stand pat, to the naysayers, and to the fearful who advocate protectionist barriers. It is a resounding vote of confidence in our own abilities to meet world competition with an unleashed ingenuity which is prized on both sides of the 49th paragraph. It's an exciting idea and it's a real possibility within our reach. It can reinforce the already impressive strength of our economic relationship. The free flow of goods, services, and investment will be an impetus to sustained economic growth, a trump card in resolving the economic difficulties of today. So let's look forward to the day when our California wines, toasted the world over, are available throughout Canada without hindrance to your dining delight, <laughs> just as Molson's Ale is available to every <laughs> Children of today will enjoy the fruits of our labor in many ways, not the least of which is strengthening the enduring ties between our people. Thank you and God bless you. And now, to Her Excellency the Governor General of Canada, Mr. Tobey, would you join me? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>